This is VOA News. I'm David Berg. The first day of public testimony in the impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump has ended. As AP's Ed Donahue reports, there was plenty of questions about Ukraine and investigations. William Taylor is the top diplomat in Ukraine. He testified there were discussions about U.S. aid and investigations of Joe Biden. A member of my staff could hear President Trump on the phone asking Ambassador Sondland about the investigations. Gordon Sondland is another diplomat. That staff member asked him what President Trump thought about Ukraine. Mr. Sondland responded that President Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden. This was after President Trump's July phone call with the new leader of Ukraine that set off the impeachment inquiry. Ranking Republican Devin Nunes says nothing bad happened. Security assistance was provided to Ukraine without the Ukrainians having done any of the things they were supposedly being blackmailed to do. An anonymous whistleblower's complaint set off the inquiry and Republicans want to hear from that person in a closed hearing. Ed Donahue, Washington. President Donald Trump welcomed Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to the White House for a second time at what is a low ebb in relations between Washington and Ankara. Erdogan recently infuriated U.S. officials when he ignored American warnings not to invade northeastern Syria in an operation targeting Syrian Kurds. The Turkish leader also upset American defense officials with the purchase of the S-400 missile defense system from Moscow. President Trump said at a news conference the two nations are working to resolve that dispute. We've asked our Secretary of State and Minister of Foreign Affairs and our respective national security advisors to immediately work on resolving the S-400 issue. President Erdogan said the two nations have been cooperating on fighting the Islamic State group in Syria, especially since the death of its leader. This is VOA News. Israeli airstrikes were met with a rain of missiles on Wednesday as Gaza violence soared for a second day. Reuters correspondent Lucy Fielder reports. Israeli airstrikes have killed more than 20 Palestinians in Gaza in two days of intensified violence. A father and his two sons were among the dead on Wednesday. From early morning, Gaza militants fired rockets into Israel. This one was intercepted by Israeli defenses. Israel's military said strikes took out at least three crews preparing to launch the rockets over the border. Islamic Jihad named two of the dead as members. The worst fighting in months began on Tuesday, when Israel killed an Islamic Jihad commander, Abul Atta. It accused him of masterminding recent attacks on Israel and planning more in future. That sparked a rain of rockets into Israel throughout the day which were met with further Israeli airstrikes. That's Lucy Fielder of Reuters. Pro-democracy protesters, a number of them students, barricaded themselves at universities in Hong Kong as the schools become the latest flashpoints in the demonstrators' quest for greater autonomy from China. Police entered the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Polytechnic University, and the University of Hong Kong, lobbing tear gas inside the first two institutions. That touched off fights at several schools. A police spokesman, Se Chun Chung, said that police believe protesters were using the schools to make weapons to use against officers. We have strong suspicion that the school was used as a weapon factory. These necessitate police response and the use of force, including rubber bullets, beanbag rounds and tear gas for disposal. The protests are now in their fifth month. Tensions have been building since last Friday when a student from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology died after falling one story in a parking garage during a police clearance operation. At least seven people were killed and ten others wounded Wednesday when a car bomb exploded in the Afghan capital Kabul. An interior ministry spokesman said in a tweet the early morning blast targeted a foreign private security company vehicle. He said four foreign employees of the company were among those injured, but he gave no further details. There were no immediate claims of responsibility for the bombing. A mixed day on Wall Street with the Dow and the S&P higher, but the Nasdaq losing ground. The Dow rose 0.33 percent. The S&P added 0.07 percent. But the Nasdaq lost 0.05 percent. For more on these stories and the rest of the day's news, be sure to visit our website, voanews.com.